Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how to create matrices in R. And it's pretty straightforward, but there's a couple of different ways of doing it, so you can decide which way you want. Uh, the first way we'll look at is by using the matrix function. And a matrix, if you're not familiar with it, think of it as a Excel spreadsheet with just rows and columns of data. All the data has to be the same type when you work with matrices. Just in the same way that we saw with vectors in our all the data has to be the same type. So if you're working with numbers, it all has to be numeric data or integer data or character data or whatever. It all has to be the same type. So let's create a matrix with four rows and five columns. It's real easy. I have an object here called mat and I'm assigning to it a matrix that has four rows and five columns using the matrix function. I'm going to print that matrix uh, here when I just type the object's name and then I want to show you I also want to print the class of the, of the object and we'll see what the class is and I also want to print the dimensions and to do that I'm going to use this dim function so this dim function just tells you how many rows and how many columns the matrix has and I also want to print out this line of code dim mat and then outside the parentheses in square brackets the number one that will tell you the number of rows and then this will tell you the line below it, dim, mat, uh, outside the parentheses, two. This will tell you the number of columns. And finally, I want to show you there's a function out there called attributes. And you can access different properties of an object. And if you want to see what the properties of an object are, uh, we'll, we'll, you can use this attributes function. So let's, let's uh, run all this code. I'm just going to highlight the lines and press control enter and here here's what I get in my output I get a matrix that is four rows and five columns and it's filled by default with NA so that's cool we just created a matrix and the default when you when you do that is going to be NA uh, the value the class of this object is a matrix it, it's matrix so that means there's a matrix class out there you want to be aware of that just in the same way that there was um, you know an integer class and a numeric class etc the dimensions of this object are four rows and five columns like we we decided that and that's what this function does it tells you that there are four rows five columns notice the first output of this function is the number four the second output is the number five so the first output is number of rows, second output is number of columns. And then this line of code here, if you actually want to access only the number of rows, you just outside of the dim mat uh, call in brackets put the, the, the number one and it'll give you whatever the number of rows is. So the first entry in this dim sorry, vector here. And it has two elements. And you're asking the first element here, which is four, and down here, you're asking the second element, which is five. Finally, we print out the attributes of this object, mat, and it shows that there's a dollar sign dim. So in R, you'll see this dollar sign used to access um, <coughs> attributes of an object. And in this case, there's an attribute called dim, which we already know, right, that a matrix um, has dimensions. So here's the attribute, and it's, it's telling you what the attribute is. It's four or five. That's what it prints out print out the name of the attribute and then the value of the attribute so that's one way of creating a matrix and now let's look at another way another way is using using this dimension function and this brings up the point that matrices in R are just like vectors only they have this attribute which we saw just now called a dimension so if you start with a vector, so let's start with a vector here that has four numbers in it. And let's look at its class. So we're going to look at the class of the vector. And then we're going to print the vector. And then we're going to look at the dimension of the vector. So all this here, we've already sort of seen most of this. Creating a vector, looking at its class, printing the vector. And now a new thing is, what is the dimension of this vector? Well, you know, it's one dimensional. So let's see what we're going to take a look and see what that means. And we print it. And then here, we're doing something that we haven't seen before. We're assigning this vector, 2, 2, to the dimensions of the object x. And what this does 
is say it's, it changes the dimensions of this object to be two rows and two columns. So the first number you pass in here is two, and the second number you pass in here, or I'm sorry, the first number you pass in is the number of rows, and the second number you pass in is the number of columns. And then we're going to see how this class of, of the object changes, and then we print it out again to see what it looks like. So let's do this. Let's run all this code and take a look. Let's highlight the lines, press Control, Enter, and here we are. Here's our vector that contains four numbers. When I add a class, it says it's numeric. So it doesn't say matrix. It doesn't say um, it doesn't say vector. We've seen this before. When you just create a vector, a simple vector, it's going to tell you: is it a numeric vector? Is it a uh, character vector? This, in this case, it's a numeric vector. And we know this because R uses vectors. Everything in R is a vector. And then we print it out, and we see one, two, three, four. We look at the dimensions of it. So here's what's kind of crazy, you might think, is like, well, I know this is a one-dimensional object. Um, shouldn't it be, you know, one? Well, it's not because the dimension is only attached to things like a matrix or a data frame, which we'll get to later on. But vectors, when you use the dim function, it comes back null. So you want to be aware of that. And then what we do here is, um, oh, I'm sorry, I print out X again. But here, we're changing the dimension. So here, dim x was null, and now we're setting dim x to 2, 2, and when we do that, we get the class, all of a sudden the class of, of the object x changed from matrix. So up here, x was a numeric vector, and down here, x was a matrix. And it's because of this line here that changed the dimensions to 2, 2. And then when we print out, instead of looking like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, it looks like this, a matrix with 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and just to show you, after you change the dimensions, when you use the dimension x again, and you when you call it again, it'll have two comma two in it. So here I set the dimensions to two rows, two columns. If I want to look at that again, I can see it as two rows, two columns. That is another way to to create a matrix. So you basically you know pass in a vector and change the dimensions on the vector. That's not used too much, but you should be aware of it, and it should get your head around ideas like dimensions um, and the fact that you can change the class of an object by changing its dimensions. More commonly, uh, a way to create matrices is to use C bind and R bind. All these do is take a vector or a matrix and they place them next to each other like they were columns or like they were rows. So C bind just puts things together column wise and R bind puts things together row wise. So here, if I have two vectors, one, two, six, five, uh, and x is 1, 2, and y is 6, 5. If I use the function cbind and pass in x, y and assign it to mat1, if I run uh, this code, let me try it out this. For some reason, I have trouble highlighting code, which is pretty annoying. Um, but let me, let me go do this. Okay, so there we go. Press Control Enter, and I get an error here. Uh, because I didn't highlight everything properly. But um, let me just do that so you're not confused. I didn't highlight the pound sign, so it didn't see the comment. But there we go. Okay, so I have my two columns, or my two vectors. I put put them together column-wise. So here's my first vector, x, in the first column. My second vector, y, in the second column. And if I, one thing else I should do is look at the class class of mat1 and the class here of, of the matrix 1 object, the matrix. Similarly, I can put these things two together like they were rows like this and notice now instead of my first vector being a column like it is up here, my first vector is a row down here. And my second vector is the next row. So this is very commonly used in R. C bind and R bind. You're going to use that a lot to com combine vectors to make a matrix. You can also use C bind or R bind on matrices. So here I have a matrix 1 and a matrix 2 and I use C bind to create a bigger matrix and I call it big mat. And if I run this now look what happens. My first matrix up here, 1, 2, 6, 5, 
is now right here in my big matrix and next to it is 1625 right there. So I, I combine both of the matrices using um, using the C bind function. You could also do it with R bind. Uh, I want to show you what the class is and I'll also show you the dimension here. So let me just run this. So you can see the class of big mat is also a matrix and the dimensions are two rows, four columns. Um, so there's four ways that we went over and similarly you can do this with R bind. Uh, I'll do that here. So notice what happened here. I have my first matrix right here, one, six, two, five, and when I uh, use that as like the first row, it creates it, it here it is, like as the first row. And then the second row, one, two, six, five, um, it puts it below, right? So the first we saw that we could combine matrices using C bind and R bind. So these two are the most commonly used ways, I would say, C bind and R bind. They're very commonly used. So if you want to create a matrix, very common to do it this way. Um, a couple other things to remember from this video, you know, matrices. Oops, I should sh I should show one more thing before we. Um, actually, that that's good for this video. There's four different ways that you know now to create matrices. So, in the next video, uh, we'll look at a couple different things about uh, matrices.